Well, hello, friends and fans everywhere. Once again, it is your fitness captain speaking. I haven't started my exercise yet. I'm gonna do back soon, some pull-ups again. But I'm, I'm not here to show you exercises today, friends and fans, but very soon I will. I wanna talk about and post this on Facebook. It was the most frustrating interviews I've ever heard in my life. There's a guy named Luis Elizondo. I want you guys to be aware of him. He's trying to get his name out there on radio shows. And he worked in a high-end position for the DOD, the Defense uh, Network. He's, he's from the United States, of course. He worked for the CIA. He's now retired. But of course, anytime you're retired from the CIA, you're not really retired. He's obviously out on a contract, probably getting paid 100 grand a year to push out a narrative. Now, first of all, Luis Elizondo, this is to you. You're a cool guy. He's a very nice guy too, I can tell. And he is a man of integrity. However, because of his job description, he worked for the intelligence agencies, agencies and I'm gonna get and talk more about his bio another time. He's had an interesting life, an interesting job, obviously. But because of his job description, he specializes in deceiving, in lying, he can send, he knows how to do disinformation to people. I mean, all the intelligence agencies, this is what generally that they're trained for, right? So he puts out truths there, half truths, and you know, just a lot of the intelligence agencies in the, and in the military industrial complex, they, I always say they quell and sagitize the information, especially when it concerns the UFO phenomenon because we're talking about amazing, exotic, free energy that the whole world, the public, should have access to, and they know it. These UFOs that are zipping around in space, it's not aliens, first of all. I mean, Elizondo doesn't even, he doesn't go so far as to even deny that they're aliens. He puts out the hypothesis that it could be that it looks like that they're off world. I've heard an interview on CNN, the woman put him on the spot. He did hesitate. And then he finally said something to the effect of, well, it looks like they're off world. It's nothing that we have. Also on Coast to Coast Radio, I listened to him. He said that this technology, we don't have it in our inventory. Are you kidding me? He knows that the Navy, first of all, is in charge of the UFO fleets largely because the Navy, they're all about building fleet to fleet, uh, you know, craft. Whereas the Air Force, they're about building separate spacecraft. You know what I'm saying? That's why the, the Air Force is largely in charge of it. And the UFOs, they've seen, been seen by thousands of people all over the world, probably hundreds of thousands of people now, going out of the oceans, particularly in the Marian Trench, the second deepest part of the ocean, where I'm sure the U.S. has under ocean bases. Other countries do as well, different parts of the world. So, and on the either, I think it was a different interview, Alessandro even, he wouldn't even say for sure that the UFOs go underneath the oceans, and he wouldn't say for sure that they're in space. He actually said, well, I think, you know, they may be under the oceans, or they may be in, and may be in space. He knows that they're in space. He knows they're underneath the oceans. This guy works for the, for military contractors. He works for in the likes of Lockheed Martin, the biggest defense contractor in the United States. I mean, come on. And anybody can YouTube, but you can see literally thousands of UFOs that researchers have been tracking, and anybody can go to the STS missions, and you see thousands of UFOs zipping along in space on different videos. I mean, you add it up, it's like thousands. I mean, we got the likes of Billy Carson, a really cool guy who's doing real research, not sending disinformation and lies to the public, and half-truths. He's going after the complete truth. And he knows we're delivering massive payloads in space to the moon and Mars. He knows there's lots of UFOs zipping around in space. They're in our oceans. But you got the likes of Luis Elizondo, who's telling the world, well, they might be in space. They might be under the oceans. Come on, Luis Elizondo. You know that this is a fact. Of course they're in space. And the UFOs, you know, the there's no maturation when it comes to the discussion of UFOs. Because the term that really needs to be used, I argue, is military UFOs. And Luis Elizondo should be saying the same thing. And I also think Luis Elizondo, he also knows but won't say it, 
that we indeed have breakaway civilizations. This is all part of the huge, massive secret space program that we've had in place for decades. And he knows this. I mean, a perfect example, just a small example, friends and fans, actually it's a fairly large example, is Ronald Reagan. Most people don't know this, but it's documented. Ronald Reagan was speaking with some military personnel. He even said, I found out we have a craft that holds 300 people around the sun. I guess he meant somewhere in our solar system. 300 people, that was back in the, what, 1988, 1985 in the Reagan years? Can you imagine what we have now, even in the larger craft? We have massive cigar-shaped cigar -shaped craft, mile or two miles long or more. We have huge black triangles that have been seen in space all over Earth's orbit and around all over the world. Uh, remember in Utah in the 1990s, I think that was the first time those huge black triangles came out. They're the size of football fields, literally, friends and fans, and larger. And we have thousands of witnesses that saw it. Remember the governor of Utah at the time, he was a former Navy pilot or something, he even uh, joked and came out and he said that he saw the uh, UFO himself, but put it as a joke because he had an alien costume on. So anyway, my point is, friends and fans, we have massive spacecraft and Luis Elizondo must have access to some of this information. He's not naive. He knows some of this information. But again, he's pushing out a narrative. He's told what to say, what he can't say. He even admits he can't talk about anything that's sensitive or has top secret clearance, really. Well, that's a shame, friends and fans, because the military knows. And again, there's a lot of great military people. I'm sure Luis Elizondo has been a, a great patri uh, patriot for his country and a great military man. I'm not knocking him that way. What I am knocking him for is that He's pushing a narrative and he's not talking, I mean the military, they, they'll even admit, I'm sure if you speak one-on-one, -on -one, that there's way too much secrecy, me. I mean, secrecy, I mean, come on friends. We had the national security state created under Truman back in 1947 or shortly after 1947. So we created all the alphabet organizations, NSA, CIA, you know, it goes on and on with the intelligence agencies. And, and they've kept way too much secrecy. They've kept us, the public, from having access to the truth. As I always say, we've been obfuscated from the truth on this anti-gravity for over 70 plus years. And exactly right, friends and fans, it's anti-gravity. It's manipulating the gravity systems. I was waiting for Luis Elizondo to mention anti-gravity. He finally brought it up. But he brought it up in the context that, you know, we're starting to make inroads with this technology now. What, you know, whoever's using this, utilizing the technology, he would say in so many words. And he finally brought up the word anti-gravity. And again, in the context, he was describing how it looks like they're using some sort of anti-gravity. Well, of course they are. And yes, he mentioned even like, you know, when you have conventional technology, it would rip apart, uh, the G-forces would rip apart the pilots. But he knows that the United States, most of the military do not even know who's piloting these UFOs because it's just so compartmentalized. But it's certain nefarious military groups that are in charge of this amazing technology. And sure, you're gonna get pilots chasing these UFOs. This has been going on for decades, friends and fans, but it doesn't mean it's alien. It just means, again, it's compartmentalized certain uh, factions of the Navy and the military Again, and they're going off the world to the moon and Mars. They're mining the moon. You can go to YouTube videos. You'll see structures all over the backside of the moon. We even have uh, astronauts over and over again saying they saw UFOs. And you could see it on videos. They, they were being tracked in their shuttle missions going to the moon. And we have it on tape. One of the astronauts even said they saw fluorescent lights on the backside of the moon. This is on tape. But then, of course, mainstream media just drops it. They don't talk about it. We also have an astronaut that said, I think it was, it could have even been Buzz Aldrin, the late Buzz Aldrin, uh, what was it, the seventh man to walk on the moon. He said, one of the astronauts anyway said that, uh, the, oh, there, I bet they can't get out of that, that dome, something to that effect. He said, we can't get out of that dome. They can't get out of there. So, I mean, it's just amazing statements, friends and fans. But again, the mainstream media doesn't cover this. You know, you hear about it once or twice and that's it. Uh, and you never hear about the secret space program. So, I mean, we've got military activities in space that would blow your mind, friends and fans. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about the 237B space plane, the militarized space plane that 
uh, orbited above Earth's orbit for 700 days in secret, and we didn't know about it till we heard the sonic boom when it came back to Earth. But I'm gonna wait to, to talk about that when I have a picture of that space plane to show you, my friends and fans. But again, back to Luis Elizondo. I'm sure he's a great guy, but Luis Elizondo, if you wanna, I just wish you would stop pushing this narrative and just you know tell more of the truth about what's really going on. Admit it, we've got breakaway civilizations going to the moon and Mars, and anybody who do, does the historical research realizes that, okay? And the term breakaway civilization was coined by the amazing author Richard Dolan. That's right. So I said in the camera there. So, uh, you know, I just, Luis Elizondo is just one example, friends and fans, of they just won't come out and admit that, oh, back to the anti gravity. We have had anti, why I get so frustrated, friends and fans, we've had anti gravity. We made the breakthroughs by the early 1950s. Okay, I've said on other videos, on my UFO videos, again, under Fitness Captain Esty, you gotta scroll down to find them. I've gotta set up another YouTube channel and make more videos. But I've said on videos, friends and fans, that the Germans, this is documented, we know this uh, finally in 1990 it came out, the Germans were working on a project called the Glock, which in English, of course, stands for the bell. It was shaped like a bell, it levitated, it didn't fly, but concentration survivors had seen this project. They killed many of the scientists that worked on the project. And it was classified more top secret than the atom bomb. And we know they were working on a, a, some sort of torsion physics, a mercury or plasma propulsion uh, system that would, would go around and around. Uh, we know it was some sort of anti-gravity, in other words, that they were working on. And again, this thing levitates. So, it was so kept so top top secret that they knew it had future ramifications in other words for future technologies so that's when it started and then we had an amazing scientist that we brought over to the u.s called uh his name was t thompson brown maybe he was born in the states i forget and then he started working of course in secret with the military as that always happens and t T thompson brown was taking up some of what the germans were working on back in the late 1930s and post-world war ii and he was working on anti-gravity. And then the military, we know they conquered it because we had publications on anti-gravity, friends and fans. I think it was 1952, 1954, somewhere around there, 1954. And the scientists were talking about how they were so excited that they were gonna make breakthroughs in anti-gravity. They described how spacecraft would be able to, there was, the term UFO had not been invented then, but they said spacecraft would be able to accelerate thousands and thousands of miles an hour within seconds. And they'd be able to turn really crazy right angle turns and all this it was described. So, well, that's exactly what happened, friends and fans. All of a sudden too, the, any publications on anti-gravity after that, you did, it went black. You didn't hear about it anymore. Anybody who researches this knows this. And that shows you the military clamped down, that's right, they clamped down on this amazing anti-gravity. They took it away from us, the public, having access to it so that we can have free energy so that we don't have to rely on the stinky gas fumes of cars and, you know, we could power up our homes with this energy because they're tapping into the ether of zero point energy in time and space. And as I say, they're able to manipulate the gravity systems, okay? It's a very complicated exotic propulsion systems and this stuff is way beyond the stealth aircraft, okay? And, you know, I mentioned Lockheed Martin, the biggest uh, defense contractor in the United States. They do a lot of great work. I give them credit. But, but I'm very frustrated because they have obfuscated us from the truth, again, for 70 plus years. You know, it's a power trip for a lot of these elitists, I guess. I mean, but it's about time. And you know what? The military are very nervous. You know why I know this? Because, well, I'm going to show you in a moment. Hello friends and fans, it's your fitness captain back here. I gotta wash my handsome face, if I may say, more of my masculine face, and have a shower. And I gotta babysit today, help my sister. I'm trying to be a strength and resource for her, After, especially after she's divorced. She has two beautiful daughters, my adorable uh, nieces, Ellie and Kylie. 
But I wanted to just finish off by saying this is why I believe the military are very nervous, friends and fans, especially the nefarious military groups and intelligence agencies that are in charge of the UFO phenomenon. And that includes, of course, NASA. NASA always co covers up for what's going on with the UFO phenomenon because they're part of the military industrial complex. They're intertwined with the intelligence agencies. Most people don't even know you have to dig at it, but NASA was created basically as the part of the military defense uh, establishment network. So, you know, the fact that they're a civilian agency, uh, NASA, that's just a fable. I mean, give me a break, but even though they've done some good work. So this magazine, you see Big Brother showing the spy satellite and space junk in, in Earth's orbit and all the other satellites? This is why the surveillance that's going on in space, they know, the military knows, right guys? You know, and Luis Elizondo, you also know, you can't keep the secret hiding this free energy, amazing technology that you guys possess. You can't keep hiding it from the general public much longer. And I know this because I know what you guys are dealing with because Luis, Luis Elizondo, the reason why he's even getting more popular, he started a company with Tom DeLong and some other cronies I don't mean to use that word harshly, but other dudes, cronies from uh, ex-CIA guys that one of them was a scientist even that worked for Lockheed Martin. I'll get all the names of these guys in the company. But it's called To The Stars Academy, and I'm going to get a picture of their presentation. It was all scripted. They read from a teleprompter. They didn't do this spontaneously with no notes like me. But uh, nevertheless, it's a very interesting company, but I believe it's like a scam. It really is because it's obviously a CIA marketing operation rolled out as a public benefit company front. Um, other researchers have basically said this, you know, they, they've really cut up this company. I mean, come on. They're, they admit they're trying to get money out of people. They might as well say naive people. They're claiming they're going to build a spacecraft in the years to come and all this. Give me a break. And Luis Elizondo and Tom DeLong. Basically, Tom DeLong was the one who, at one point in his presentation, he's, he's claiming they've been dealing with this threat, this, this, these beings for thousands of years that they've been with us. Give me a break. There are no aliens, friends and fans. Believe me, I wish we, we were being visited by aliens. There's no evidence for that, especially in modern times. I mean, come on. It's all military UFOs, friends and fans. Yes. Anyway, back to the, to the Stars Academy. Uh, they're trying to... I believe you, they want you to purchase uh, shares in their stocks or something with a credit card. You're not supposed to be able to do that. Even states in the U.S. totally uh, go against that. I mean, but anyway, this is just so Luis Elizondo is, again, pushing the narrative with Tom DeLong and these other guys. It's like, again, this, this totally sanitized little soft disclosure about these technologies and that they're working on these technologies and we don't know who's piloting the UFOs. We don't know where they're from. They're military. I've told you, friends and fans, and we got breakaway civilizations as part of the military-industrial complex, the elitists going off-world, interplanetary civilizations, but human beings, us, you know. And I'll get into Gary McKinnon, the famous hacker that found this out for us, the public, friends and fans. He hacked into NASA computers and literally found fleet-to-fleet -fleet manifestos from the Navy going off-world. And they call themselves off-world officers because they're on the moon and Mars. So that's what's really going on, friends and fans, and a lot more. We'll get into it on more videos. But again, I wish Luis Elizondo would just admit uh, what these propulsion systems are. The fact, just come out and say, Luis Elizondo, that yes, it's military UFOs. The U.S. have it. But also China and Russia are involved. It's gone trans-international, but it's very compartmentalized. Okay? So that is my spiel about the military-industrial complex and UFOs today. And Luis Elizondo, again, I'm not knocking your character. You're a great guy, except that you bought in, apparently, to pushing the narrative for certain groups, I guess, to do with the CIA, the military, and you're not telling more, you should be telling more about what you really know, okay? Or at least they should give, him, give you permission to do so. I mean, obviously he can't talk about very much if he can't talk about sensitive information 
and classified information because that's all what the military does primarily is classify, classify. I mean, there's so much in secret. It, it's, we know very little and we're being lied to. I mean, and Luis Elizondo, when you say you don't know, you can't even come out and say that for sure the UFOs are flying around in space. I mean, again, they're, it's all over YouTube videos. You know they're underneath the oceans because the Navy are in charge of it. Even on the Navy space fleet, friends and fans, I think it's, it's the wording is Navy Space Fleet uh, on their badges. That tells you everything. They're in charge of the secret space program, largely, these UFOs, okay? And, and ships that are, again, massive, huge ships between the Air Force and the Navy that are delivering these huge payloads, uh, you, you know, supplies to the moon and Mars for terraforming these planets. And the military, why wouldn't they want to be on the moon, of course? That's why the moon missions were pulled because whoever controls space controls the Earth, basically, right? So they're building bases on the moon. There's lots of minerals that's documented that they're able to mine. Uh, check out the minerals that are on the moon, friends and fans. We'll get into that in another uh, video, okay? Thanks for listening. friend. Thanks for watching. Bye, friends and fans.